The Celtics bounce back from a loss against the Pacers by taking down the Hornets in Charlotte on consecutive nights down in North Carolina. Versus former lead assistant coach Charles Lee and forward Grant Williams, things got chippy as Lee received his first career technical foul, and Williams menacingly charged at his former good pal Jason Tatum and got tossed for it in the first of two. In the second outing in Buzz City, which the Celtics also won handedly and improved to an NBA third best only behind the undefeated Cavaliers and Thunder of 6 and 1, Grant Williams would flop after D. White lightly shoved him. Stay tuned for the details on how the Celtics are fighting through adversity and a whole lot more. Right quick, almost 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. We'll get to the shenanigans in Charlotte, but shots have been fired at the Celtics lately. After Boston's first defeat of the season against the Indiana Pacers on the road, the Pacers hung a banner that read, Beat Boston. This was after Indiana had blown a 24-point lead and allowed the Celtics to force OT in which the Pacers barely won on a Pascal Siakam 3. Then there was EuroLeague coach Ergen Adaman who said regarding the Celtics, You guys are not world champions. We are the EuroLeague champions. If you want to be world champions, come and play us. Beat us and then okay, you'll be world champions. I'm not sure why Ergen is taking the Noah Lyles approach, but if he wants to play that game, then he has to explain to me why every country's best player at the Olympics is in the NBA, and why a team full of NBA players won gold for a fifth straight time. But I digress, given we have a lot more to cover. After fake fans on Twitter somehow assembled a stance arguing that he should be traded, 2024's Eastern Conference Finals MVP and Finals MVP Jalen Brown bounced back with 25 points and a 15-point win over the Hornets. That said, Brown took the second of two in Charlotte off in what was his first missed game of the season due to a nagging hip flexor injury. JB already had one MRI for this injury and is now set to have a second one. Joe Mazzulla called Brown day-to-day. -day and this issue could have easily been the cause of Jalen's struggles against Indiana. For however long he's out slash suffering through the injury, it's obviously a ton of adversity to fight through for the Celtics. Jason Tatum fought through the adversity of being accelerated towards and body checked by his former good friend Grant Williams exceptionally. JT did react to the ref trying to hold him back, but only because there was nothing to hold back. It was pretty swag how Tatum just let the situation roll off him in a moment's notice, as it not only didn't get in his head whatsoever, but he was entirely unfazed by it. It was nice to see Jalen Brown stick up for him though, as JB stepped in to question Grant's motives, and here was JB post-game on the situation. Actions speak loud, you know, so it is what it is. We, we got the win, we move on, but, you know, there's no place in the game for that. I thought JT and Graham was friends. Well, I guess not. It's us against the world, so, you know, as, as a leader, as anybody on my side, I ride for all my guys in the locker room. Um, and, and teams like to send messages and try to set the tone and do all different type of stuff to try to either get us out of character or mess with our mind or make us feel like we soft or whatever the case is, we're not going for none of that. By him, how do you react to that? Did, no reaction. Did you think it was unintentional? It was for sure intentional. Like, what, are we, what are we talking about? Y'all see the same play that I was seeing? He hit him like it was a football play. Like Ray Lewis coming across the middle or something. It is what it is, Grant, no better than that. Thank you, Jalen. After taking 18 threes against the Pacers, Tatum admitted that he overshot before taking on the Hornets, saying, I settled way too much last game, especially at the end of the first quarter. I shot five threes in the last minute and a half, and then the start of overtime, I shot like three. That's eight right there where I just settled. Tatum took 18 threes combined in the two outings against Charlotte, so he was evidently settling a lot less over the back-to-back. -back. Jason scored 61 points over these last two outings and leads Boston in points, rebounds, assists, and steals per game on the year. In NBA history, only five players have had at least 150 plus points, 35 plus rebounds, 25 plus assists, and 10 plus steals in the season's first five games. Tatum this year, Jordan in 89-90, Giannis in 17-18, Bird in 86-87 and 87-88, and Kobe. Tatum was asked about the Grant situation multiple times, yet like when the play happened, his composed maturity continued to shine through. To going through that with somebody who <laughs> spent many years with and just what, what what was your takeaway from that one? Uh, I mean, I don't really want to talk about it. It's just got ready for the game today. We, we came to Charlotte, did what, what we were supposed to do. Um, or in uh, Atlanta, try to get another win for we go home. 
when something like that does happen, is part of you like, I, I want to score 40 the next time I play this guy, circle it on the calendar. Obviously, this was a unique situation when we come back the next night. How do you want to respond to that um, in such a situation? Uh, no, I will never make it about one person. Um, I understand who I am, who I am in this league, and you know, uh, come on, play the right way. It's not about a uh, matchup or anything, so just come out and try to dominate, uh, give, give my chance to, give my team the best chance to win and, and play the right way with that scoring, rebounding, screening for other guys. Um, the objective is to make sure that we give us the best chance to win, so it's not about you no know, situation, no other person. Here was Derek White and Joe Mazzula on the play. Just two damn big free throw and stuff like that, you know that, but um, know, JB's got our, got our back always, and we always know that, and you know, we got JT's back always. Were you surprised that he did that? Yeah. Man. I think we all kind of were surprised. I don't like to see him. Great, I'm glad that he's fine. Uh, what I liked most was just how he, he jumped right up, didn't lay around, didn't really face him, just went right up, went to the free throw line, did his business. So uh, I don't like the fact that he did it, but I'm happy he was okay, but I'm more happy how he responded to it. Just get up, move on to the next play. And uh, the team responded well too, so it's a credit to him. What did you think of Grant's hard shoulder? I mean, like I said, I was like, oh, JT, it was great. Get hit like that, pop right back up, it's big time. Grant Williams tried to act all innocent when that clearly wasn't the case. This right here was a ridiculous response. Hey Tatum, like what was going through your mind? Uh, I think it's more so he didn't see me more than anything else. Like I'm reaching, like I definitely made contact with his body before I reach. But uh, probably a hard foul, definitely not intentional, not trying to hurt him by any means. We all know that's one of my closest friends in the league. And as you see, he got up and just walked away. And then I got up, asked for help, and raised my hand like I thought it was a foul. JB kind of escalated it, but I understand he's trying to protect his teammate and stuff like that, but um, that's my dog. No matter what, you know, I got his back, and I don't mean to, didn't mean to try and, if it, you know, I don't know, he's won't take us to a real text later tonight, but um, it wasn't that bad. Did JB have any words with you? Did you guys talk after? No, not yet. Um, I think he just, he doesn't think it was a basketball play, which I think that's what he commented or something like that, which I can maybe see just in terms of like, because he didn't see me. But it's a similar thing, like if you see somebody in transition and I reach across his body, I make decent contact with him, so I understand how like, kind of like maybe a blind side, he was more surprised than anything else. But like, it wasn't like I took him out or took his leg out or did anything else. Like we've seen way worse in the league. And um, I think that at the end of the day, like, that's, we all know that's my dog, so uh, no, no malice or any, any issue of that sort of regard. You told me before that you guys were going to get dinner and everything. Are those dinner plans canceled? Or I, I would someone... assume most of those guys will not be coming over for dinner tonight, but uh, I'll talk to them again tomorrow. Uh, we had wings and stuff prepared, so it's kind of funny that it's like, well, the game ended that way. But I'll see them tomorrow. We'll compete again. We're on different sides now, so we're going to have to compete. When we're on the court, we're, we're battling, but, you know, we're brothers off. And, you know, even if they may think that was a rough play, you know, we're always going to be together. Thanks, in other news, Namiash Keita is earning a spot in Joe Mazzulla's deep rotation. Keita was a game-high plus 18 against the Pacers and had a team-high 9 rebounds in just 18 minutes. Then, against the Hornets, he had a couple big baskets to close out the first half after Charlotte had made a run, and played crunch time minutes down the stretch while the Celtics were without their main center minus Porzingis and Al Horford. Keita had this nasty reverse poster on the forehead of Miles Bridges. A night later, he got revenge for Tatum by posterizing Grant Williams. With his play, Keita's forceful athleticism at the center position and screen setting is drawing comparisons to Robert Williams III, and it's clear the Celtics haven't had anyone who can do what Namiish can since the Time Lord, so these are accurate assessments. The depth of the Celtics at the center position in general is coming in handy, minus Porzingis indefinitely due to a foot injury and at times Al Horford due to rest. Massive shout out to Luke Cornett for scoring a team third most 19 points in the Celtics' most recent as of this recording 10-point victory. Victory. Having the size and mobility of Cornet in Missoula's back pocket is such a damn luxury. Luke's not only the ultimate glue guy, but a valuable piece to the puzzle with his talent. Speaking of depth, and Peyton Pritchard passed Eddie House for the most games with 6 plus 3s off the bench in Celtics history. Continuing his hot start to the season that looks like anything but a fluke, Pritchard's made 29 threes, good enough for fourth most in the association, and he's averaging nearly 16 points on the year on a 45-44-92 shooting split. 8 mile can certainly ball. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.